So for the new BMW M4, it was important for us to focus on the most important elements. We emphasized the kidney and made it the main feature in the front. It is bigger and there is much more functions in the kidney. The air is not only going in on top, but also on the bottom. The whole kidney goes into the bonnet and gives it a very powerful look. Also, we have the typical trapezoidal M graphic down here, which creates the big air intake in the front. We know this theme from other M cars, but now it's even bigger. With the surface on the side, it helps to bring the airflow into the air curtain on the side and goes right onto the wheels. The car has a wider track than the series car. This is good for driving stability, but it's also great for design because the car gets better stands. To emphasize this, we have a crease line here in the wheel arch in the front so that car gets really sitting on the road. When we go in, back in the back of the car, we have the same sharp line than in the front. It's dividing the surface and it allows us to make very emotional surfaces onto the wheel. Also, a new theme is the black rocker, which goes from the front to the rear. It makes the car more lightweight and it's also designed with very small radii and a very flat surface here, which makes it look like a blade. In the rear, we have also focused on the most important elements, which is the exhaust pipes. The double round exhaust pipes are known with all our M cars. All the surfaces help to emphasize them. They are bigger than the predecessor and they are embedded in a very big diffuser. And the two fins on the side go directly into the carbon fiber where you also have the same fins in the roof. So the M4 is a simple and bold statement. All the M cars are polarizing and they are not necessarily pleasing everyone. They are meant to move people, not only physically, but also emotionally. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I think probably the most iconic element of the front on the new M4 are the kidneys. And those kidneys have been carried over uh, identically in their external perimeter geometry um, on the race car. They've been opened up internally um, to, for the care and feeding of the racing engine, um, but ultimately it's still the same geometry on the, on the perimeter. And it's also um, very, very similar uh, at the front with the trapezoidal sort of lower mouth of the car. Um, and I think together with those elements, the headlights also have this kind of very strong forward inclination. Um, and that's also referencing um, the new M4, um, but um, carrying it slightly further and giving it a little bit even more determined uh, expression. And for a race car, I think that's entirely appropriate given the purpose of it. Um, also at the front, um, we have uh, a reference to the air curtain from the new M4, um, but in this sense, we've actually installed uh, corner lights for improved visibility at super high speeds during endurance races. And um, this boomerang shape is actually the same as the shadow that's created on the new M4's um, front surface. But for the race car, this contour is incredibly important for the aerodynamic performance um, at elevated speeds, but also um, at different um, angles of yaw. And so that's one of the reasons this corner is a bit different than on the M4. Another important aerodynamic element of the race car is the front splitter. And that front splitter creates quite a bit of downforce, but it's also essential to the feed of the underfloor, which is also an incredibly important aerodynamic component. But that front splitter transitions around to the side, and you can see that same carbon fiber construction carries over to the rocker panel. And that rocker panel actually continues in a graphical way all the way to the back and serves to thin the car in terms of the overall proportion, in terms of how you would read it um, from a distance. Um, there's also a kick on the race car um, that gives a little bit of a forward inclination to that lower graphic. 
I've noticed, I mean, this is something that we already know from the M8 TTE. Yeah. And um, we have also implemented it in the series car, the black element to give it more of a lightweight exactly. feeling. Exactly, right. Yeah, it helps the proportion. I think the other aspect of the new M4 production car is that it has this kind of continuous loop um, from the A pillar down to the air breather detail on the body side and then down into the lower feature line of the body side. And the race car picks up on that exact same constellation. Um, you'll notice we actually don't have an explicit air breather, but rather an entire um, area dedicated to letting exhaust air out of this area of the car. Um, but the contour of that line is referenced directly from the new M4. And so it has that continuity that ties the car together, but also ex helps to kind of structure it um, the way it d exactly the way it does on the production car. It also looks like you were carrying over the roof. Mm -hmm. Yep. The geometry of the roof and the rear glass is identical to the M4 production car, uh, including the fins, um, but also this very flat rear glass. And that very flat rear glass is essential to an efficient feeding of the rear wing. And that's what makes the new M4 such a great basis for the race car, is that the rear wing, which balances all of the downforce that we gained at the front with the front splitter, um, with this rear wing and it really makes for a great uh, handling car. Let's uh, see the back. I have noticed before that it looks very different to the production car. In some areas it's uh, quite familiar, but down here it's very different, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you're right. So um, probably the biggest difference is defined by the added width. Um, so the car is about 75 millimeters wider per side than the production car. And so because of that, we have the very generous fender, fender flare. Um, but yeah, it creates a, a wider constellation at the rear. The lights are carryover um, from the production car. This geometry is all um, identical. Um, we do have some added technical elements for serviceability. This is, these are quick releases for this uh, rear deck lid. This whole um, rear diffuser area pops off for easy replacement in case of race damage. Um, and then if we move across to the diffuser, you'll see um, this is all open, whereas on the production car, it's more closed. Um, that's to evacuate more heat and uh, pressure buildup. Um, we have the diffuser strakes and fins. Um, and then where the production car has the uh, reflector, we actually have an air outlet um, for the rear wheel arch, but the line um, very much references the, the production car quite literally. Right. I mean, this shows quite clearly how these two cars are developed from the road to the racetrack and from the racetrack to the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think it also demonstrates how great of a basis the M4 uh, production car is to become a race car. It has such iconic elements and it also has uh, geometry that really lends itself to being uh, a high performance, uh, efficient uh, platform for a race car. And um, I think we could both be proud. Yeah, it's very exciting and I think these both cars are so refreshing. Yeah, cool.